Welcome back. We're going to look at the complex number Z0 and we're going to write it using functions as opposed to rectangular coordinates. So we have the sum of the real function u sub 0 and the imaginary function v sub 0. And each of these are functions themselves of x and y, which are the elements or components of the real and imaginary axes. Now we're going to take the derivative of this particular function here. Notice we're varying z, which means we actually have delta z which is delta x plus iota delta y. And for clarity, I've written the definition of a derivative in one dimension here, where the, va the value we're varying is x. So we take our function f of x, and we increment it by delta x. We take the old function or the original function away from the incremented function, and divide by the increment. Now, our function f of z sub 0, or f of z 0, actually is a function of x and y. So we're actually going to increment in both x and y and divide by the increment of delta x, which is simply, or excuse me, delta z, which is delta x plus iota delta y. And that's what we have at the bottom center of your screen. We have our original real function u0 and our original imaginary function v0. We've incremented them. So we've incremented x and y here, here, and here. So what we actually have is this. We have the incremented function u, the real function u. We take away from it the original real function u, and we divide by our increment. We have the original function v and the incremented function v. We take the original from the, the incremented function and divide by the increment. And this is the definition of the derivative of our function f of z0, which is a two-dimensional complex number. Now remember that we can approach our complex number from many different directions, but the most simple ones are where we fix the imaginary component and approach z0 along the real direction. So that would be doing this, or if we fix the real numbers and we approach or vary along the imaginary direction, we will be approaching like this. And we're going to do the same thing with our derivative. First of all, we are going to approach z0 from the real direction. So we're going to set delta y is equal to 0. So if we have this expression, and everywhere we have delta y, we set it to 0, we get this expression here. And I'll leave it to you, or if you want, you can pause the video. But if you look closely, we actually have these two partial derivatives. We have del u del x plus iota del v del x. Now clearly it's a partial derivative of x because we have delta x in the denominator. And of course we have our function u and function v. So that's why we have del u del x plus iota del v del x. And this is where we've set the imaginary component not to vary and we've only varied the real component. And now what we do is we approach z0 from the imaginary direction. So we set the real variable, or delta x, to 0. And if we set delta x to 0 from our derivative, we get this expression here. And once again, if you want, you can pause the video. But if you look carefully, you'll see in actual fact that we have this partial derivative. We have negative iota del u del y plus del v del y. Now, note that I've actually moved the iota from the denominator to the numerator because I've multiplied by iota over iota, which is simply 1. So we've seen that if we hold the imaginary component fixed and vary the real, we get this partial or these partial derivatives. And if we set the real component to be fixed and vary the imaginary, we get these set of partial derivatives. Now, in order for the differentiation of a complex number to make any sense, we know that the direction in which we approach the complex number shouldn't make any difference. And this basically means that these expressions here must be equal. Said differently, for a unique derivative, we require that the real components and separately the imaginary components of both derivatives are equal. So basically, we're going to set del u del x equal to negative iota del u del y and we're going to set iota del v del x equal to del v del y. 
and we have our Cauchy Riemann conditions. We have that del u del x is equal to del v del y. We have del v del x is negative del u del y. And these are the conditions for a path independent complex derivative. Note of course that our z0 can be any point on the complex plane of our Argand diagram. And that's really it. The last thing I'll say is where the derivative at z sub 0 exists we speak of the function f of z being analytic at that point or holomorphic is actually a more modern term but it's the same as analytic. It means we don't have a divide by zero scenario. Anyway the point here is that for a path independent derivative of a complex number we must have the Cauchy Riemann conditions to be true. So I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you got a lot out of it. Thanks for watching. Please pass it to your friends and consider supporting me on Patreon.